In this video, we'll be looking at how to calculate the number of moles if you are dealing with solutions and you're given the volume of the solvents and the concentration of the solution. How do you calculate the concentration of a solution? Now remember, let's first look at what a solution is. A solution is if I take a solute and I dissolve it within a solvent, that outcome, that mixture is what we call a solution. And I can calculate the concentration of that solution. Concentration can be defined as the number of moles of solute per unit volume or per cubic decimeter volume. So we will use the following formula or this variation of the formula in order to work out either concentration of a solution or the number of moles if I am given concentration of a solution and the volume of the solvent. So just to recap, this is a solution. We take a solute and we can work out the moles of the solute by using this formula and we dissolve it in a solvent of a particular volume. That will get us the concentration of the solution. Because we can combine these two formulae together, N is equal to mass over molar mass and C is equal to N divided by V. If I substitute mass divided by molar mass in the place of N in this formula, I get the second formula, C is equal to mass divided by molar mass multiplied by volume. So when working out the concentration of a solution, I can work with either of these formulae. They will ultimately get the same answer, and I choose which one to use depending on the information that I'm given. It's very important to note that if you're asked to work out the volume of a gas at standard temperature and pressure, they are not wanting you to use this formula. Remember, this is the formula that we use for the concentration of solutions. So when we're dealing with a solute dissolved in a solvent, solutions. If I want to work with gases and I want to work out the volume of a gas, I know there's a V there and V is for volume, but we will use this formula. This is the one in order to calculate volume of a gas. If you want to see a video of me going over this formula, I will link it in the description below. But calculating this volume will get you the volume of the solvent in a solution. Looking at this version of the formula, concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume. This matches up with our definition for concentration. And our definition for concentration is it is the number of moles per unit volume. The number of moles of solvent per unit volume or per cubic decimeter, which is our unit of volume. Concentration measured in moles per cubic decimeter and N meaning moles. It makes sense why our unit for concentration is moles per cubic decimeter, because as I mentioned, unit for N is mole divided by our unit for V, which is cubic decimeters and if I move this up to the top, we know we have to make that a negative exponent. So mole per cubic decimeter. That's why it has an exponent of negative three. Just remember that volume must be measured in cubic decimeters. It's often given in cubic centimeters. In order to convert from cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters, we must divide by a thousand. The reason why it must be in cubic decimeters, my unit for volume, is because my unit for concentration, the SI unit, is moles per cubic decimeter. If I look at this version of the formula, again, concentration, C in moles per cubic decimeter. Again, we've got volume, in cubic decimeters here at the bottom v big m is molar mass and we use our periodic table to help us calculate molar mass of our compound and baby m is mass in grams now please just remember that mv is molar mass multiplied by our volume another thing to note when calculating the concentration of a solution is that our volume is not always given in cubic decimeters or cubic centimeters, but it can be given in liters or milliliters, which is another familiar unit for volume liters. Now, one cubic decimeter is equal to one liter. This is something that you can memorize. And one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. First example says, calculate the number of moles of solute in 500 cubic centimeters of a solution of concentration two mole per cubic decimeter. Now the first thing to note is that they don't say that this is the volume. So you need to look at the units and know cubic centimeters, that's a measure of volume. They do tell me concentration is two moles per cubic decimeter, but again, even if the word concentration isn't there, you need to rely on the units in order to know this is a representation of concentration. 
Now, which formula we decide to use depends on the given information. And as you can see from the question, I'm given volume and I'm given concentration and I'm looking for number of moles. If I look at that given information and the information I'm looking for, it doesn't make sense to use this formula. I don't know the mass. I don't know the molar mass. I don't even know the compound. So this one's out of the question. We're going to use this one. So you write your formula first, which I'll be doing over there. Then we substitute in our variables. In the place of concentration, I'm going to put two, two moles per cubic decimeter. I'm looking for the number of moles. So M is my variable. It's my unknown. And I divide that by the volume of the solution. Now take note how the volume is given as 500 cubic centimeters. Just note that 500 cubic centimeters is equal to 500 milliliters, but they don't ask for that in this question. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind. But as I mentioned, my unit for volume needs to be cubic decimeters. So to get it to cubic decimeters, what I can do is I divide by a thousand. So divide 500 by a thousand, and I'm going to get 0 0,5 cubic decimeters. And that is what I need to substitute into my formula. I can therefore work out that my number of moles is one. Remember your units. If you don't give me a unit, you're not getting your mark. And if you don't write your formula, you won't get the formula mark. So this over here represents my written out formula. Substitution, answer with units. Let's do another example. Calculate the concentration of a solution containing 11,7 grams of sodium chloride in 500 cubic centimeters of water. The first thing that I like to do is list my variables and then I can decide which formula makes sense to use. Calculate the concentration. I'm looking for concentration. Then they give me mass, measured in grams. They tell me that the compound is sodium chloride. As soon as you know your compound, you can work out the molar mass using the atomic mass numbers, 23 for sodium plus 35,5 for chlorine, which is 58,5 for my molar mass. And they give me volume, which I converted to cubic decimeters. Now there's two ways that we can answer this question. I know that ultimately I am looking for the concentration, which means I can think to use this formula. I'm looking for concentration. I have the volume, but do I have the number of moles? At the moment, I don't. However, I can first use this formula to calculate the number of moles using my mass and my molar mass. So I use mass and molar mass to get number of moles. And then once I know number of moles, I put that in the place of N and I put in my volume to get my concentration. Or what you can do instead is you can use the formula that combines these two into one. And that is this formula. I'm looking for concentration. I have mass, I have molar mass, I have volume. So I'm gonna use this one. I write my formula first. Let this represent my written out formula just so that I don't have to rewrite it. Then I substitute into the formula. So you take your variables, you plug them in. Remember at the bottom, this means molar mass multiplied by volume, and I get 0, 0,4, and remember your unit, mole per cubic decimeter. That is your unit for concentration. Now we can also use this formula to work backwards in order to calculate mass. If this is the case, we would substitute in our concentration, our molar mass, and our volume, and we would work backwards. We would do inverse operations in order to work out our mass. In the same way, we can use this formula to calculate volume of a solution, and maybe even they ask you to identify the compound by calculating the molar mass if they give you the concentration, volume, and mass. Just always start with your blank formula first, substitute your variables in the correct places, and if you do your mathematical operations in the correct order, you should get the correct answer, provided that you give the correct units. In the other videos in my playlist, we look at how to calculate number of moles, as well as things like volume at STP. Remember to check out the links in my description below for more stoichiometry videos, more chemistry and more physics videos.